something else? I can't do this. I should be fired. You can't fire me. I quit. Hey guys, welcome to episode 11 of the Knit Now Swatch Later podcast. My name is Courtney. Today is Thursday, March 19th, 2020. And you can find me on Ravelry as Pup and Instagram as Knit Now Swatch Later. Anything that I talk about and show here on the podcast, I will link to in the description box below. Today I have a few finished objects to show you, although they are not of the typical knitting variety. Um, I got into some clay a few weeks ago and I have never done this before so they're not great but I made this little TARDIS I don't know how well you can see that and I made this Little, little book and then my husband made this little pig for me which of course turned out way better than any of the stuff that I made but that's okay <laughs> it's my life um, so yeah a couple little finished objects to show you guys and then I have a bunch of whips so here we go. First up in my, I already took it out of the bag, but this is my library catalog card bag by the Silver Shed. And in here lives my Soldatna. If you remember, I had actually finished this and bound it off and everything. And it was too short so this snowflake is marking where I was the last time I showed it on the podcast and I needed to add on I think six inches to make it long enough for me to feel comfortable wearing and then I'm going to do the ribbing and then cast off so I think I still have like two and a half inches to go so and that's the Soldatna crop pattern by Kaylin Hunter and I was using a Hobby Lobby Simply Yarn V, Simply DK or something like that. Um, again, all of the information about uh, the projects I'm talking about are linked below. You can also find that in, on my Ravelry page. All right. Next up is the second sock of my heel toe do si do pair that I was making for my husband and this oogie boogie progress keeper is where I was the last time I showed on the podcast I am like halfway through the heel flap and I don't know about you guys but the heel flap and gusset it it takes so long in my opinion I just I give up I move on to something else and get bored with it so I prefer I prefer knitting um, afterthought heels or fish lips kiss heels but my husband insists that the heel flap and gusset fits his foot the best so that's what I knit for him <laughs> and that's why it takes me so long to knit socks for him but speaking of socks for him I have cast on a new project as part of I'm participating in um, Julie Ann Knits let's see her name on Instagram is Julie Ann Knitter and she's hosting a week-long sock challenge and the goal is to knit a complete pair of adult socks in one week so I thought that was kind of exciting and the start date was Sunday, which I believe was March 15th. And then the challenge ends on this Saturday. So if you wanted to join in, feel free to do so. Here is my sock so far. And this is just a basic vanilla sock. Um, 
that I'm knitting for my husband. So he picked out the colors. Uh, I'm not crazy for this combination, but whatever floats his boat. <laughs> so, and today is Thursday, so this is still sock one. So I don't think I'm gonna make it, but I am plugging along and doing what I can with that. So, can't say that I didn't try, right? Up next, I have in my Alice in Wonderland bag by Kitches the New Black is a new cast on that you guys have not seen before. This is the beginning of my pink velvet sweater. I'm just past the uh, ribbing and the short row shaping in the back and I have just cast on not cast on I just started the color work so I don't know if you can see that but I just finished one row of it and then I set it aside for this sock challenge so and I've kind of been trying to put in some more work on my soldatna so I'm hoping that that will motivate me to finish the soldatna and then I can work on this again because this was really fun so the yarn I'm using is, the gray is Cascade 220 fingering, and the color is 9559. It's just a nice gray. And then this yarn, this yarn I have in a ball, but this is Hey Sister on their LMC sock base. I cannot remember the color name, but it is in my projects on Ravelry. And I, um, if I remember, I'll put the name down at the bottom of the screen for you. So that has been super fun to work on and frustrating at the same time because I've had to rip out the color work, I think twice and the short rows once. So it's been challenging but very fun and I'm really looking forward to having the finished sweater so I just I just want to finish my soldana and then the pink velvet and the pink velvet sweater is by Andrew Mowry um, I don't think I said that before and yeah so I'm really looking forward to finishing my soldana so that I can get some more work in on that that would be super fun um, and then what else do I have Oh, I haven't showed you guys my crochet corner to corner since February, so I thought now would be a good time to show a little bit of progress. So this adipose stitch marker from Simply Serving marks where I was the last time that I showed this on the podcast. So a good, a good bit of progress has been made. And I've actually started um, this fortune cookie stitch marker from Pineapple Yarn is marking where I started doing the, the decreases. So the end is in sight. I just have to decrease along the one edge until it is, it's the width that I want it now. And then I just have to decrease one side until it's the length that I want it. And then I can decrease on both sides and hopefully have a finished scrappy blanket. So I do have some acquisitions to show this week that I'm so excited about. I'm so glad I was going to record yesterday, but I got out of work really late, so that didn't happen. But since I waited until today to record, I have two things to show you guys that came in the mail today. And the first thing are these Chow Gu Mini Twist needles that I have been so excited for. My plan, let me pull them out here to show you guys. I'm planning on casting on my husband's second sock for the sock challenge on a set of these just to see if they are any better for my hands. Because um, sometimes the nine inch circulars are too, the needle is like too small to, for the way that I knit and the way that I hold my needles, there's not enough room 
for me to hold on to. So I'm hoping that since they're, these are longer tips than what are on the nine inch circulars, hopefully this will be, this will be the solution to my problem and I can knit everything on nine inch circulars and just be a happy camper. <laughs> All right. Oh, and I ordered that on Etsy. I think the name was uh, Greenwares. I'll put, there will be a link to her shop um, in the description box. And then this is a cute, adorable project bag. I love this print and I love this detail at the bottom. I, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it's so cute. Um, this is from the Stitching You on Etsy, and this is her label. Ooh. There's her label. And unfortunately, she is shutting down, closing up shop. Um, so this was the last of her updates as far as I know. And so she put all of her bags on sale for $20 and... I'm so happy I was able to snag one. I've been following her on Instagram for a while. Um, but it came with this lavender sachet. It smells so good. But it's um it's a pretty good size bag. And it has a box bottom, which I love, and a little detachable handle in a contrast color. And I just think that it is so cute. And I need, I love the bags that have this handle. I've been wanting to get another one for a while, so when these went on sale, I just, I had to get one. <laughs> All right, so last episode, I asked you guys to post questions, and I would answer them on this week's podcast, so I got two questions last week in the YouTube comments um, from Allison De Laurentiis, and she asks, what is your personal favorite project that you've ever made? Um, and I think... I think the answer to that would have to be the Cal and My Cowl by Kristen Lehrer. So here is my finished Cal and My Cowl. And I knit this with uh, one strand of Volenbein yarns on her footsie base, which is fingering weight yarn. And the colorway was Solstice, and I held that together with. Um, a strand of Kramer Yarns Fountain Hill mohair in gray. And the reason I chose this is because um, every day since I've cast this off, I've worn it. Worn it out and about and I love it so much. It's so nice and squishy and soft and I just, oh, I love it. So, and then the second question from Allison is what is the hardest project that you've ever done? And I will say I don't really think that knitting is hard. I just think that it depends on how motivated you are to work on the project because I believe that, that if you're learning how to knit and the first project that you want to try out has cables in it, then you just, you learn how to do a cable and you just do it. So that is, that has always been my approach to knitting and I'm self-taught, so I'm probably not even doing it right, but <laughs> it's just to have fun. So it was really hard for me to answer this question um, for the reasons I just explained, but I will say that the Whispers in the Wind Socks by Kay Litton I, which I don't have here to show you. Um, I think they're in the dirty laundry. My husband wears them, so. So the thing with that pattern is that it was not a hard pattern, it was just a tedious pattern. So I had to have, it was hard for me to memorize it because there, it was a 10 row repeat and the uh, cables down the sides are not, they're not cables. I'll try to put a picture up in the corner here and to show you guys so you can see what I'm talking about but the the cables down the side are not technically cables they're just twisted stitches so they're a little bit easier but just a 10 row pattern repeat is a little bit tedious to um 
and I always had to pull out the pattern and, and pull it up on my phone uh, for a while. The first like month that I was working on the pattern, I had it printed out and I would have it in my chart keeper and track it that way. So it's kind of a, a lot of energy <laughs> to pull out all of the things that I needed to work on that. And I finally switched over to using Knit Companion on my phone which it's, it um, syncs into your Ravelry projects and, or not your projects, but your library. And you can pull in the PDFs from that. So that was really helpful in helping me finish this project, but it was just, it was incredibly tedious and time consuming. And I just, I never really wanted to work on it. So it's not really the hardest thing I've ever knit. So I kind of didn't answer your question, but it was incredibly tedious and was not, I won't say that it wasn't fun. And like, I, I think the socks that I got out of it, I think the socks that I got in the end are really pretty and I love them, but just super tedious and not really my thing. <laughs> so I'm glad to have them off the needles finally. So if you guys have any other questions for me, feel free to ask them below. You can also post questions as comments on the, um, I try to make a post with a, a screenshot from this episode every time that I publish one on YouTube. So you can also go over to Instagram and comment on that post with any questions that you have and I will try to answer them. All right, so I'm looking at my notes here because I actually did a good job and wrote out detailed notes of what I wanted to talk about so that I didn't forget, although I still forgot to grab a bunch of the stuff that I wanted to talk about, but whatever. You guys still know that. I can just cut the, I can just cut those parts of the video out. It's fine. <laughs> um, so as far as chatter goes, um, I talked about a few episodes back that I have started listening to audiobooks while I'm knitting. And recently, I uh, finished a book called Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris and that book, that book was so good and like interesting that my husband actually started like wanting to listen to it with me and <laughs> so that was, that was good. I was, I was a little disappointed in the ending um, and it was kind, it was a little predictable in that things were just kind of too perfect in the beginning so it was predictable and I wasn't happy with the ending, but the book kept me interested and I, I finished it in like three or four days maybe. So I would, I would recommend it in that it was interesting and it, it keeps you, it keeps you entertained. Um, but I, I was a little bit disappointed with how it ended. Um, and then, so right now I'm currently reading, uh, or listening to an audiobook. A Dead to Her by Sarah Pinborough, which is her newest novel. And I've been listening to that and I'm almost finished. I think I have like 15 chapters to go. I'm kind of disappointed in that one too. Uh, Sarah Pinborough is one of my favorite authors and I just started listening to part three um, while I was getting ready for work this morning. And it's like, it's just now starting to get interesting. And that's not really, that's not typically how Sarah Pinborough's books work so I was a little surprised but I'm hoping that it'll get better and it'll have a really great ending <laughs> um and then at the same time I am also reading The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon I think I totally butchered that I'm sure but I've been reading that before bed a couple nights a week and I'm not I'm not very far I'm only like five or six chapters in but it seems really good so far and uh, one of my friends highly highly recommended it to me so I think once I finish reading Dead to Her I'm gonna focus a little bit more on that one and, and try to get through it and that's pretty much it so I hope that you like this video and if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe um, so until next time happy knitting bye